ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> thank you so much. This is, <coughs> I'd like to have the, our director, Heidi Connum, and our state manager, Catherine Straten, come up. And we have a special guest, a hero in our community. And uh, we're going to have a short little Q&A talk back. So important, such an important discussion. And this is the founder and the executive director of Inner Truth Project, Mindy Fetterman. Please take the stage. so amazing about this this story is that uh, there are implications in the story about um, why Jesse is dealing with severe depression but she never really comes right out and says it um, so one of the things that Heidi and I had discussed is something that I also read uh, when researching the play is that she was possibly molested by her father and um, it was subtle but of course uh, we know that sexual abuse in families can be subtle. A lot of times the, um, the other parent in the home doesn't know what's going on, even though the person who is being perpetrated against has uh, all of the implications screaming out and all of the uh, outward signs. The other person in the home, usually the mother, is, is completely oblivious. And so everything that was going on between the two of you and the communication uh, and the reflections back about your childhood were completely spot on when there is when there is molestation and incest in the home. And I might add, uh, lots of eating disorders when there's sexual <laughs> <laughs> and when people don't deal with their emotions, a lot of times they go to sugar. So I don't I, I, I didn't expect to say that, but I thought, wow, that that's also extremely accurate. So the Inner Truth Project, um, if I can just take a moment and share with you what it is, uh, the Inner Truth Project is a nonprofit on the Treasure Coast that is for survivors of sexual trauma. So we work with men, women, and children starting at age 10, because it's necessary, unfortunately, and we offer support groups, individual therapy, but we also do writing workshops, we do art therapy, we do uh, trauma-sensitive yoga, and we do equine therapy, and we do a whole host of different uh, activities to help people transform from living as victims and having depression, like Jesse, and um, learning how to live victoriously in their lives. Because almost a third of the people who have been victimized at some point in their life by sexual trauma turn to suicide. And there's always a better option because not only do they have the opportunity to realize that the shame that they're living with is not theirs and it does not belong to them, but they have an opportunity to share their story and maybe save somebody else. And I know because I tried to commit suicide twice when I was a teenager after being drugged and gang raped. And uh, I, I work with people every single day who have suicidal ideations and they live with that suicidal thought over and over again all the time and it becomes an obsession to try to end their pain. So being able to work with those people and show them that there is a different way to live is an amazing thing. And so this was beautiful that you did put this on because this is not an easy thing to talk about or an easy thing to do. So I commend you for doing it and doing it beautifully. Thank you. Thank you, Mindy, for coming seriously. Does anyone have us. any questions regarding the play or regarding uh, Mindy's project? If you do, please, or the theater even, please uh, let us know. 
is the Inner Truth Project um, just localized, or are, is it all over the country? If you'd like to make a donation, we can make it all over the country. <laughs> <laughs> so when I when I founded the Inner Truth Project, there was nothing actually that I could find in the country that was specific to sexual trauma. We're very lucky in our community to have um, the, the um, to have safe space, which is um, a domestic violence outreach and shelter. And a lot of communities around the country have dual resources. They have a shelter for domestic violence and then resources within that um, organization for sexual trauma. Our community did not have anything that was for sexual violence, for rape and sexual abuse. We have a rape crisis hotline through the state attorney's office, but nothing for support. So we literally created this model uh, where we have a, a, a center, it's beautiful and it's warm and engaging and it's just a safe place for survivors. So we had to really recreate this, this uh, model. And everywhere that I go and everywhere I speak, anywhere in the country, people are always, why don't we have that here? Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something that can be replicated, but it is not anywhere else right now. It's something that we created. Remarkable. Yeah. Very remarkable. Absolutely. Yeah, it's phenomenal. And we're getting ready to um, start a new program. It's called the Pain to Purpose Program. And it's a 12-week intensive outpatient program because right now what we do is uh, we invite people in. Most of the things that we do are free or uh, low cost. So we invite people in and they can choose, you know, if they want to do individual therapy. Um, most of the, the survivors are um, struggling with substance abuse, alcohol, drugs, self-injury, um, trying to deal with their suicidal ideations, eating disorders. Uh, I, I'm not pointing to you because you don't want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you brush your teeth every night after you do the show. Um, um, so all of those host of things. And then also, because of usually if it's an early childhood trauma, there's such a lifetime of a diminished uh, uh, self-respect so there's there's just layers and layers of issues so not only now do we have the ability to offer them the mental health aspect but we give them 12 weeks of of, of a caseworker working with them to come up with a care plan so we can get them um, a physical most survivors do not get um, the, the physical care that they need. A lot of particularly women do, that have experienced sexual trauma don't get pap exams, don't get mammograms, don't go to the dentist. Because if you think about it, if you've been traumatized sexually, going to the dentist and laying in that position with your mouth open and having somebody put something in your mouth, I know that's graphic, it, it, in correlation to sexual trauma, but we all deserve to be able to go to the dentist without that extra fear. Going to the dentist already sucks. But <laughs> going on top, so, so the, the case plan uh, with the caseworker, the care plan is how do we give you the tools to take care of yourself medically? How do we help you with your finances? A lot of people don't even understand how to do a budget because they don't think that they're smart enough to handle their money or their shopping is out of control because they're filling their emotional holes with, with uh, you know, stuff. So over that 12 weeks, we try to work with um, all of the different areas of their life and give them the tools so that they actually have a springboard into the healing that's a lifetime of journey. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, well, thank so you. I have a question. You, you said you, you have your victims, they do some writing? I'll say that again? Some of your, in your program, they do writing? Yeah, yeah. Have I'm just going to throw it out here. Have you considered to have their writing put on stage by actors? We did yes. that, and I actually performed it. You did? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and the proceeds go to your... Unbelievable. Yeah. And, and then uh, they can see and that. And impressed in the dance department with Mindy. And yeah. It was wonderful. That was incredible. We had... Um, that was incredible. I don't know how many survivors we had, but several of them wrote out their stories and then were interviewed by a local woman in the community, Terry uh, Palumbo. Uh -huh. She interviewed them and then transcribed their stories and then each um, actor took their story and then created a piece. We wow. met with Terry and then Terry um, 
transcribed all these stories from their their actual you know um, stories, and then we um, we actually found some sim symbols too. I mean, mine was a silver dollar, and it was great. It was absolutely, and the survivors came up after, and um, it was beautiful, yeah. absolutely beautiful. We, we always are looking for ways for um, our survivors to do have creative outlets because it serves as an educational um, um, connection to the community, mm -hmm. but also because every single opportunity we have to take our trauma and create something beautiful is, is another layer of healing. So for example, right now, um, a, a whole bunch of the, uh, the survivors that we're working with created masks that um, uh, symbol, symbolize um, they, the, they're half, half trauma, half survivor, and they're on display right now in Fort Pierce at the uh, Clerk of Court um, building in downtown Fort Pierce. So um, I invite, they're up for the entire month of April, April Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So um, we're always doing things like that. So if anybody ever has an idea and says, you know, hey, you guys should, I don't know, do a chalk sidewalk chalk exit, I don't know, you know, we, we, we'll do anything, we'll do anything, and I'll go anywhere and talk to anybody, you know, about it. Are there men survivors? Oh, yeah. Are uh, there men yeah. survivors? Turn around. I am a survivor, and I've been going to a uh, for over eight years now. Oh, wow. How many years? O over eight years. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. So, one second. There's, uh, Ronnie's in the play that you did. The, the number uh, for uh, women is one in three or one in four, depending on where you get your statistics, but really I don't think it matters. It's one too many. For men, it's one in six. All of those numbers are based on reported incidents. Um, most people do not report these crimes. Most, most situations are like this. They stay in the family and they're not talked about. And nobody ever knows. So uh, sexual violence is truly, whether you're talking about rape, incest, molestation, it is a silent epidemic. It is everywhere in our community. There are people sitting in the audience. I know the two of us are not the only one. It, these are people in in, on your street, in your gated community, in your synagogue, in your churches, the people that you work with. And it's um, hard to grasp because we don't know what perpetrators look like. They're, they're everywhere too. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, it absolutely happens to men. The stigma is um, even greater for men. It's harder for them to come forward. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're sexual violence does not discriminate. So it doesn't matter your gender, it doesn't matter your color, it doesn't matter your size or how much is in your bank account. It affects everybody. Well, I already, I know about this because I know you, and this isn't necessarily familial, but tell them about your um, What's on Tap program. I think that's phenomenal. Okay, Do, can I take one more second? <laughs> and then you'll have to cut me off. Yeah, I, I and then she'll be here. Okay. <laughs> Did you say she'll be here all night? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> She's been literally talking about this. So we have a program called What's on Tap, and TAP stands for Train, Acknowledge, Protect. And so um, I was molested as a child for many years, and then I was drugged and I was gang raped when I was 16. And I was raped again when I was 23. So my entire life is violence. But when I started sharing my story publicly, I kind of glossed over the fact that I had been drugged. I never really gave that much attention to it, particularly because I don't remember a lot of the details. But when I started to share it, I was hearing so many stories, especially locally, about other people who were saying to me, you know, I never reported or I never told anybody because I had been somewhere, only had one or two drinks, and then was violated, and I always felt embarrassed about it because I couldn't remember all the details. So I started hearing all of these stories about drug-facilitated sexual assault. So I went to the sheriff's office in St. Lucie County and in Martin County, Indian River and Okeechobee, and I started doing all these interviews, and I found out that the um, law enforcement does not uh, adequately, in my opinion, humble opinion, does not adequately train their officers about drug facilitated sexual assault. Then I found out that in our hospitals, unless you have a SANE nurse, which is a sexual assault nurse examiner, and you end up in the emergency room and you say that something has happened, you've been violent,